Well, there's the halfway mark. Well, maybe not halfway. <laughs> Came from the very end of the bay. And we still have to go to where there's no more ice, which is ugh, which is around that point. Yahoo. sun is coming up slowly it's um, a little after five o'clock in the morning <laughs> I'm still in fishing time so I'm awake like I woke up quarter after four there's no way I was going back to sleep so <clears throat> doing this it's still raining out it must be storming out there for the guys on the coast this rain is so good this place was tinder tinder dry and uh, Thankful and lucky that our forest around our home is not bursting in flames, like so many other places in the planet, right? But anyway, um, I think most people out here get it. Some don't in the world, but uh, there is a huge sense of humor over here at this house. <laughs> There's non-stop um, humor and chucking shit at each other. Sarah's one of the worst ones, so... Anyways, it's good. There's no off offended culture doesn't exist here. Offended. There's just no, there's no time or room for that here. But I was finally sitting down yesterday for a minute. She was in the kitchen. And all of a sudden she said something. Oh my God, the cat just threw up a, a mouse. And then she went into her gag noise, which makes me die laughing every time she's done it. Anybody does it. It just makes me laugh so hard. I don't know why. It just makes me howl my freaking head off. So it was the horses in the mountains guiding whatever. I don't know why. Every time somebody gets bucked off a horse, it just makes me laugh my freaking head off. Can't stop myself. <clears throat> so anyways, she was really going at it. I guess the cat hacked up this mouse that hadn't been chewed or anything. It was whole and surrounded other food right on the floor. And started, what's it called? Gag reflex or something? Sure, gag. And of course, I had to, Mr. Ruthless had to hit the record button on the phone right and record it. That posted it up is so funny. Anyway, so anyone knows she was laughing afterwards too. She was laughing at the fact she's going, Oh, you're a jerk. Because <laughs> I posted it up for the world to join in on the humor edit, which the majority of people did. It's funny, isn't it? Isn't it how it's funny how different people are? 
you know, some people, most people I'd imagine, would see the humor in that, and the other people would think, oh my god, you're just a disgusting human being for doing that. <laughs> you know? It's like I remember uh, where I was just previously living in Pemberton for a long time, and there's a, uh, I had a neighbor up there. I was pretty good. Probably thought he was a pretty good, cool dude at first. And then soon realized why the majority of the community couldn't stand him, but, um, I was over there, and a friend of mine, real good friend of mine, firefighter, uh, he'd done some guiding for a big game in the past, so I got him a job to come guiding with us. A big outfit, all on horse, horseback, and he wasn't that familiar with the horses. So, it was funny, he phoned me up, this is at the time of that movie, Broke Back Mountain, came out, right? He phones me up and he goes, hey, uh, so it could be this weekend I come over, we could uh, do some riding and stuff. And he's all serious, right? And I go, oh, yeah, okay. Um, where'd you want to ride to? Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> like this, right? He goes, oh, I gotta go. And starts laughing. I'm just rousing the shit out of him, right? And it was quite funny. If you knew the character, it was really funny. I would have said that to him. Coincidentally, the husband of my other dear friend who is cancer right now and their three daughters. So anyways, uh, the same day I was at this farmer neighbors of mine, and I said, hey, you know, Mitch, because he was actually the president of a wildlife association club. I said, hey, you know, Mitch, he's like, yeah, yeah. And him and his wife and their, and their teenage kids are in the downstairs. And I just leaving. I go, yeah, he just phoned me up and asked me uh, about going riding this weekend and get familiar with the horses. And I said, yeah, where are uh, you think you want to go ride to Brokeback Mountain? And I started laughing. And he just stood there looking at me like this. Um, those sort of jokes aren't funny in this house. And he was dead serious. I'm like, what? Holy shit, dude. Wow. So, I'm just saying, people are different, right? People sure are, she, they sure are different. Here comes Adventure Pup. Here she comes. She wants to hear what she hear from the people, don't you? you hear from the people. But anyway, people are different. People are different. Teach their own, that's fine. The problem where people screw up is when they demand that strangers comply with them on their beliefs and what how they may govern their lives. You will do the same as me. Even though I don't even know who you are, you're gonna do the same as me. You're gonna speak the same as me. You're gonna act the same as me, or else I'm gonna do everything to annihilate you. That's the bad thing that's been going around lately, right? And picking up speed, and people have been taught that. Kids are being taught that. <laughs> who was the first messed up human being to come up with that one? Wow. Anyways, so on that note, I decided I'm going to have a coffee. I had to hit click the machine, so I thought I'd come in here and do this first while it's percolating. I'm going to go grab a coffee and uh, wake up to this little beautiful, another beautiful day to be alive on the planet. Today we'll wake up with each other and get a whole bunch of voices heard. Coffee time! Coincidentally, look at this mug. <laughs> That's a hot one. Mm, go grind in there. So what's my schedule now? My schedule now. Um, I have to start getting all of my backpack equipment together, all my camp gear together. My list of equipment that needs to be fixed. Confirm that I'm going to pull off what I'm going to pull off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I emailed that power source company back. I mentioned to you guys. Is it funny how many people in here actually poll the viewers whether or not they should collaborate with products <laughs> to get to uh, get advertising items or money or whatever it is? But I just said to him, I gave him a short message that said, uh, "There's no way I'm going to use your products unless I I am convinced it is very good and it works." And either way, I have to purchase, come up with a power source. So I gave my mailing address, said, here you go, you want to send it to me, send it to me, but I'm not going to represent you or utilize it unless it is worthy, <laughs> right? Because our lives, our lives depend on that electricity now when you do something like this. Not when you're with horses or not when, if you, if you're like 30, 50 miles from a highway, big deal, you can hike that, no problem. 
if something goes down. But this is being dropped off by a bush plane, and I would need the nearest road is probably 200 and something miles. In that time of year, in the amount of mountain ranges that you go up and over, you're not getting out of there. If you did get out of there, you're probably going to have to travel south, follow the water draining. And, well, I guess you would get out eventually, but it'd be a long time, right? So, um, I need that electricity to be, I need my, my items powered up so that I can contact a plane to pick us up. Especially if there's some kind of a goofy mes emergency. If somebody gets chewed on by a grizzly bear or falls and breaks something, whatever, right? So that's my update there. Now enough about me and my stupid babbling. Let's get some people heard. What's this about? These are, this is in the recent column. There's a couple recent in the, and I'll go into the, uh, the old folders. This is titled, You Were Talking About the Eyes. You, you may use my name, Dean Weiss. You were talking about the eyes. There's something that seemed very simple back when I learned it 45 years ago about the human eyes, and that is the cones. That it is that the cones are the cells that detect color are primarily focused in our forward vision in the center of the eye. But the rods that are also very present there, which detect light, also have a large abundance on the sides of the eyes in our peripheral vision. Now, what do you think that means? I have a BS in physics. That doesn't mean I'm any genius, but I do understand the physics of it. And here's what I can tell you. What I'm going to say is pure speculation, but it makes sense. At some point in the past, we lost the ability to connect our rods to our cones, our light interpretation, to our color interpretation. And in fact, Use it the other way to project, to see in the nighttime, just like all these cryptids do. Why do you think that the primary color of the eye shine seen somewhere in the distance is red? It's because red light in our atmosphere scatters the least. And therefore, if you can see in the red light spectrum, which we can only slightly see in, that would be the best spectrum if it was cloudy, foggy, smoky, anything but clear atmosphere. On the other hand, if it were a clear atmosphere, seeing the blue spectrum would give you a definition of things that you could not see in the red. And I've seen descriptions of eye shine from red, yellow, orange, green, even blue. I think we're capable of doing that same thing. Just a simple belief that you cannot do something is enough to make you unable to do it. <laughs> Isn't that a fact? Isn't that a fact? Yeah, who knows about the eyes, man? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know, but I have a feeling I'm going to find out. We're going to find out. Um, absolutely appreciate you writing in with your knowledge. Very generous of you. Yeah, can't do something. I have a few people that are close to me who somehow beat themselves up and think they can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, and I spend my entire lifetime encouraging them and trying to explain to them that they can. There's nothing you can't do. You're, you are your only enemy. You can do this. You have to quit sabotaging your life. My God, the amount of times I've had to give these talks to various people is... I can't... It's very frustrating for me to watch. It's frustrating for me to watch the pain that people cause themselves by thinking they can't. See, I was raised basically... Uh, Various people in my life hammered on me, telling me I was dumb, as basically dumb as a hammer, didn't count, and wasn't very smart. Believe it or not, and uh, I proved them wrong. I proved them wrong, and every single, every single negative thing I heard thrown at me in my lifetime, I want the opposite. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's just juice. It's just fuel to make me crush it. The eyes, I don't know, we'll see. We will see what comes, right? That's a good one, though. That's some good information for people that are curious. What's this? This is titled, Be Prepared. All right. 
Sometimes they're thinking, oh, oh, here we go. This might not be relevant to what we normally talk about on this channel, but here we go. What do we got? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, here we go again. Steve, I'm writing you once again, only because if anyone is watching in this area, they should have information of what they may confront or what they may be confronted with while out in these hills. This is a small thing, but I feel compelled to tell it. First off, a footprint had been found in the area of this small encounter. Two or, excuse me, three days ago, we were rotting the gas line next to Gerlach's Cemetery in Franklin Furnace, Ohio. We entered the trail at the corner of the graveyard. As we went in, I noticed some of the saplings were pushed over leaning up the hillside. I also noticed a couple were broke off around eight feet up. When you ride through the saplings, you're on a hill sideways, so you can really have to concentrate on not tipping over. All right, so you're not on horses. Anyhow, that got my attention. We rode back in about two miles. We stopped, did a little bullshitting, and rode out. I looked a little harder at the saplings that were broke off on the way out. I was on the ready. They looked rotten, so it was me overreacting. Like I said, hard to pay attention to detail while riding on a sideways trail that's trying to throw you off the four-wheeler. Anyhow, went back up on the gas slide through the same trail an hour or so later. When we went in this time, I noticed a small sassafras sapling was pushed down over the trail. Just the top was in the trail. Just the top was in the trail, the leaves. It wasn't there when we left. We never stopped or disturbed any of the trees going through there. We were the only people back in there this year. I know this because the grass on the gas line was tall and no four-wheeler tracks. Just the ones from us. Anyhow, we got back in there the second time. Got one of the four-wheelers stuck in a log at the bottom of a hill. Screwed around, making quite a bit of racket getting it off. Rest for a while and started back out. On the way out, we went straight down another hill where we should have turned to go out. We got down to the bottom of a hill and the hill on the other side was too steep to go up. So we heard, so we head back out to the, tra back out the trail and out the way we came in. We stopped before we got to the cemetery to bullshit a little. As soon as we shut the bikes off, something smacked into a tree trunk. Never heard nothing like it in the woods before. Oh, mosquito. I'm not a big fan of mosquitoes. Sorry. Sheer force. Well, I unsnapped my 44 and the lead guy says, did you hear that? I wasn't going to say shit because I want to know if he heard the same thing. I did. So I say, I say, what did you hear? And he says, something just threw a big rock into a tree. Well, what's the chances of two people having the same abstract thought? Why didn't one of us think something different? I'll tell you why. It's because we both heard a rock about the size of a bowling ball slam into a tree about 25 feet away. It wasn't two pieces of wood. It's thick as hell on both sides of the gas line and on the side, the rock was thrown, was downhill. I had my crow call with me and thought about antagonizing whatever it was, but I was the only one packing and the trail is only around 15 feet wide, so not much reaction time. We didn't leave right away, and I kept waiting for more rocks to come our way, but that was it. We got the message. I think we may have boxed in when we went straight and pissed it off a little bit. I never seen it. But like you say, I'm taking the time to send this in. I already know. Anyhow, I just thought if anyone around there is listening, I should share this. One other thing I wanted to mention. I was squirrel hunting back up in Michigan when I was around 34. I'd been settling in the same spot around 30, 30 or so minutes. Well, most squirrel hunters know if you don't see a squirrel in about 10 minutes, you need to move because there's none around or they slipped out the back door on you. Well, that's what I'd been doing up until then. After I'd been there quite a while, something let out a big sigh, like they were getting impatient, lol. I never did see what it was. You could hear it breathe in. The tongue tick off the roof of the mouth and an exhale. It was just plain weird. 
I've had deer roll out off my sleeping bag at night. What? I've had deer roll me out of my sleeping bag at night, blowing next to my tent when they discovered what they were curious about was human. It wasn't a deer. I never did see another hunter. Of course, they just blew it off. One last thing off subject. I was around 40 years old camping in the forest of Michigan and when I got up the next morning my small three-man tent was covered in granddaddy long legs. There must have been about 10,000 of them standing on another three or four layers thick. It reminded me of looking at a dandelion after it turns white. Where the hell did they all come from? Your guess is as good as mine. Moral of the story is if you're in the forest be ready for anything. Signed, a friend of the States. Holy shit, isn't that funny that uh, out of the whole email about a Sasquatch experience, the da Daddy Long Legs spider story blows your socks off. That is freaking creepy. They're not the fastest moving insect either, right? I'm sure there's a possibly a what humans may come up with a logical explanation for that. I don't know what it is. I'm going to imagine you're in the uh, the right place at the right time to be in the middle of whatever they had going on, but that is absolutely bizarre. I, I'm picturing that, and it gives me the creeps. Um, I don't know what is up with that. I've never seen, I've seen, we have the spiders here, obviously. I've never seen a display like that in nature anywhere. If it's on a log, a stump, a rock, whatever, I haven't seen that. I have seen a bunch of real teeny tiny insects, real black flying, fly-like things, all just kept on landing on top of a yellow diesel fuel can in camp one time. I've got that in video somewhere. It was so bizarre. They were so thick, they are falling off in clumps off of the gas can out of the ground. So bizarre to watch. I don't know what that was about. That sounds kind of similar to what you just witnessed, right? What else? That's about it. Well, one time I was in Kansas. Is it Kansas? And we were on a uh, we we're hunting turkey basically across the southern U.S. on our way to Lacine, Kansas to go into the world turkey hunting competition and, it, it, and it, we had a team and uh, we had selected various properties to hunt on the way there. We had a couple of weeks and uh, whatever, we were doing the whole spring. And uh, I'll never forget this because it was new to me. We sat down, you know, because it's turkey hunting, you sit down right on the ground, sat down on the ground. One buddy's calling, I looked down, and I had a shotgun laying on the grass, and we had been sitting there for about, I don't know, three minutes. And I glanced at the shotgun, and it was literally peppered with ticks. Small, tiny ticks, baby ticks. I guess it must have landed in a nest or something, but I'll bet you there was at least, I don't know, a hundred ticks on the stock, all the whole length of shotgun and climbing on us. I'm like, time to get out of here. Holy, right? Creepier than creepy. Yeah. When else? The only other time, we were, one time in Southern Alabama, or in Alabama, we had night vision rifle scopes on AR-15s and FN AR-308s and uh, thermal scopes, thermal scopes, infrared night vision scopes and we shot a pile of hogs and we stacked them all up in a great big pile and then in the morning when daylight came we're back and we're standing there and we've got our snake proof boots on let's go up to your knees on top of your pants and I we're standing there videotaping and taking pictures of all these with we some monster boar hogs and I looked down and it was almost like the ground was moving like the black and white distorted screen on the television when you lost it service I'm like, what the hell's going on? I looked down, I looked at my boots, and it was like the whole ground was crawling up my boots, and it was all of the ticks that had jumped off of the dead hogs. It was absolutely freaking disgusting and alarming. Something else, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, who knows how many ticks were on those hogs when they were alive? Whoa, I'm getting creepy right now. Anyway, I guess we got a little derailed off the main topic, right? So, sorry, back to you. Thanks for sending that in, man. Appreciate that, especially the area, and that you felt it was your duty to inform your fellow people of your community where you were and what's going on. That's golden, right? So, appreciate you. Keep us posted if you learn anything else, all right? Be safe out there, and 
don't go picking a fight with them. All right, don't try to pick a fight. And uh, I, I would suggest to you, and I don't tell people what to do, but that was also strongly suggest to you if you do have a visual of one of these beings, unless you are absolutely 100% convinced it has full intentions to harm you or somebody with you, and then put frickin' holes all through it. But I would strongly suggest not to just go and shoot one of these beings just because it's down there looking at you. I don't think it'll end well. I do not think it'll end well no matter how many guns you got on you. All right? Oh, it's getting brighter out there. Animals coming to life. The daytime animals are coming to life. Excuse me, I should say. This is titled Mark from UK. Steve, hope you're well. Love the channel. On one of your videos 10 months ago called Blood Trailing a Deer, he finds it hanging 20 feet up a tree at 37 minutes 40 seconds on your left hand side just above your mobile something appears on the other bank seems to move to the left then goes back it's possibly just a trick of the light but it only happened once I live around 30 miles from the man from Matlock UK who had to move because of mind speak from these beings I have photos of tree bends from a wood near me most well within human range to bend. I talk to people of the subject of beings in the UK. Most people say they are not in Canada or the US either. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Mark. Okay, Mark. Appreciate it, man. No shortage of people pointing out goopy stuff going on in the videos behind me when I'm in the woods. And uh, I already know these, these beings are around me, so it doesn't really concern me all too much when I get the weird things on the video, although it is interesting. But it just is, I'm not overly interested, just to be honest, I'm not. Because I already know they're there, so. I just like to uh, make my blatant display of, I know you're here and so am I, and leave me alone. I'm doing what I want to do. This is titled, Dog Man Photo. Steve, this is Sharon again. Since I sent you the email with the Dog Man Photo, I have a terrible... I have had a terrible experience with it. If you'd like to share my story, I think it would help others to protect themselves from these things. I'll be waiting for your reply. Again, the Owl Man and I are good friends and have discussed matters of Dog Man and the Sabe many times. Thank you. All right. And here's another email below it. Hello, Steve. This is Sharon from North Central Pennsylvania. I'm a friend of the Owl Man, my name given me from the Sabe. The locals here call themselves the people is Wanderer. An apt name as I have wandered the forest around the US since I was a small child. Today I am just going to share a photo of a pretty darn clear face of a dog man. Later I'll share my lifelong experiences with the Sabe, the people. The photo here of the dog man was taken by me in 2015 dur during summer in Shoil kill? Shui? Shui kill. Shuil kill? This is a good one for me to butcher. S C H U Y L K I L L. Shuel kill County, Pennsylvania. Just about 100 feet behind a busy district in a wood, wood creek. Sorry, in a wooded area at a creek next to RR tracks and a small depot. Thankful I did not see the dog man who was standing in the creek and peering at me from behind the branches of a 20 foot tall tree next to the creek. The tree was about 30 feet from me. The photo was zoomed. I did snap two photos seconds apart. I'll include both here. Thank you. Unfortunately, they're not included in this copy of the email, which is pasted into my notes. So I'm going to have to go back in there in the e inbox and hopefully find them. There you go. Another dog man, the dog man thing. I'm going to be learning a lot more about the dog man thing. I don't know why I call it thing. The dog man. There's got to be a different name for those things. Because, you know, it's funny when you hear the term dog man. It just doesn't sound that legit. Does it not, that name? Yeah, we saw a dog man. <laughs> you know, or only due to, be, due to the movie industry or comic book in, industry. Same thing with, yeah, I've seen a werewolf. You know what I mean? It, it, it's uh, sometimes it's like calling 
the Sabe people. Yeah, we've seen a Bigfoot. There's Bigfoots all over the place. You know what I mean? It's those names that almost discredit instantly when they come out of your mouth, in a way. Just to me. Maybe I'm wrong. The dog man thing. I have a tough time calling it dog man. I think it would possibly get a little more attention and respect if you were to call it there's some kind of a beast out there that resembles a canine and it's creepier than shit. I think that might get maybe a little more attention from somebody who wasn't concerned as compared to saying, man, I've seen this damn dog man the other day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway. Okay, my brain's waking up. The coffee's kicking in. It's early. Bear with me. Now, Who's next? This is titled Killed a Horse. Killed a Horse. Hi Steve, I'd like to stay anonymous. But I've sent a previous story about these beings, but this was when I was eight. I lived in Edgewood, Albuquerque. My neighbors raised horses, and that's how they made their living. They had a pasture that butted up next to a thin pine tree line, thick couple typos, thick pine tree line, and they would keep their horses out in the pasture during the summer, 24-7. At this time, they had a Clydesdale mare with a colt that was about eight months old, and he was mean and strong, and he would chase me and my friend out of the pasture. At one point, he killed a coyote that had gotten into the pasture, but one day the owner went out to the pasture to check the horses, and he couldn't find the colt. He thought he jumped the fence and was loose. So we started walking through the wood, trying to find him. As we were getting to the middle of the woods, his wife screamed and told him she found the horse, and told him he found the horse. The colt was eight feet up in a tree with barbed wire wrapped around its neck, holding it to the tree. Now you know that's a heavy animal, but the colt's stomach had been ripped open. Left leg had been torn off. But there's nothing else in this woods, I think, that could do that other than one of these things. I'm 18 now. I'm in the woods most of the time, and that's by far the craziest shit I've ever seen. Thanks. Keep up the good work. That's unfortunate. That's really creepy. Um, yeah. What do you say about that? Um, if it had been, I don't know, I'd have to see it for me to try to do a guest, a guesstimate of what was possibly, um, responsible for that. That move sounds like whatever it was, I don't know, that's a big effort for, let me just try to take this in, think about this for a second. All right, first off, all the previous animals that we have had reported to us killed, harvested, whatever you want to call it, by these people, these beings, legs tore off. You should tear a leg off. Rarely do we hear of the carcass being absolutely stripped clean like we normally do. We're the only animal that strips every ounce of flesh off of a carcass because, well, if we don't, we think we're being wasteful, which is the, the farthest, the farthest from the truth. The way it actually works in nature is animals make a kill, a harvest, they eat what they eat from it, they leave it. While they're gone, other species feed off of it. It gets spread out, it's on the ground, it, it saturates the ground, fertilizes the area, and numerous parts of that animal and the flesh go to various species. That's how it's supposed to work. We're not really supposed to strip every single ounce of red flesh off of a carcass and take it away and then take the remnants away and throw it a plastic bag and put a landfill. That works against how this is supposed to work. And it was embattling. I do believe so far at this point we are the only known species that takes something like a rope or a wire or a cable and hangs our game from a branch or a frame to clean it out, skin it, and take the meat off. So I think this is the first time I've heard of one of these, potentially one of these beings, using something to string it up. Usually they put it up in the fork of a tree, right? By the antlers or whatever, wedge it up, hanging on a branch in the wedge. That seems like quite the effort for something for one, it sounds like quite the effort for one of these beings to do that, just to rip its guts out and rip a leg off. Doesn't make sense. 
unless it, it was possibly something not very kind with a very dark demeanor that enjoyed killing or possibly torturing something. Who knows, right? We don't know if that horse was alive when it was strung up or not. That's the unfortunate part. So, that's a, bit, a little bit alarming. I don't know if we're going to have somebody else chime in with the exact same flavor of experience or not. Mmm, gruesome, nasty, sad in a way. I think if I found one of my horses in that position, I would probably dedicate a lot of my time to trying to even the score. But that's just me. I know it's one of my flaws. I don't know why. I don't know why I have that in me. I remember. <laughs> I don't know why. I, uh, I've always had that in me, eye for an eye. I don't know where it comes from. I remember when I was uh, very young. I remember basically chanting to my older sister in private, saying that one day I'm going to get bigger and I'm going to get that man back, referring to my mother's second husband. And I got him back. And I never, I never wavered from that thought. Isn't that weird? Never wavered from that thought since a little boy. Anyways, different topic. Sorry about that. Let's read this one. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having an honest and open-minded space for people to relate their strange and often isolating experiences. I was encouraged to send this one and only experience I've ever had because of the strangeness of the sounds that I now realize others have heard. Thanks to your channel. I also want to make this clear. We live in northern West Chester County, New York. It is semi-rural, spacious, but not wilderness. 15 minutes drive and you're in as much suburbia as you can stomach. And these suburbs stretch all the way south to Manhattan, New York, about one hour drive away. We're not remote. Christmas Eve 2019, as we always do, we had we go to a huge gathering of family and friends. Finishes before midnight so as not to intrude on anyone's Christmas. We got home soon after midnight. No animals around, which is kind of strange. Thought nothing of it. My wife went to bed pretty soon thereafter. I chilled on the sofa watching something on YouTube, I think. Had headphones on. So about 30 minutes later, she comes back down saying she's been calling me because of the noises outside. Of course, I hadn't heard them, but went outside to check it out, as I do. We have a neighbor. As I do, we have a neighbor and nothing for some distance but dense forest. An open field behind us, under a high wooded ridge line, a road in front, more trees and a lake on the other side of it. Pitch pitch, black at night, no street lights, no lights, occasional cars passing. Also, let me say, we get a lot of strange animal sounds. Deer cries, foxes, coyotes, fisher cats, raccoons, owls, otters, bobcats. All can make some weird sounds. All I've heard before in the 17 years we've lived here can always pick them apart. So, as I'm about to go outside, I hear this noise. A noise I can only describe as an old lady screech. Lower pitched than a scream and loud. Banshee loud. Louder than anyone could make trying to imitate it. No panic scream, a threatening, very loud death cry shriek that I could actually feel resonate. I'm not easily scared in our semi-rural envi environment, aware but never scared, but this is enough for me to go back into the house, get a flashlight and an axe and go back out. Also, when I scare off coyotes, I'll make a loud deep growl to let them know I'm there and make it sound like I'm big enough to be caref careful with when approaching. It works. I've had them right up on me and they take off pretty quickly. Anyway, I'm back out growling loud, flashlight facing across the road where the sound came from. Then I hear it. About 100 yards down the road and now on our side of the road. So, I go onto the road, only open space to see, Growling, flashing into the forest where the sound came from. I hear it screech again, so loud. I'm guessing about the same distance as before, but heading up beside us to get behind us. I decided to go back into our yard and head toward the back stone wall about three feet high. I have a more open view of the field behind. It cuts through. 
I'm still letting it know I'm there and it gives a screech almost in response. At this stage it's cutting across to being directly behind but maybe 100 yards straight back. I can hear heavy footsteps on the forest floor beyond the field cracking branches. Not violent, just like it's breaking a trail. And more periodic gut-wrenching screeches. It makes its way to the top of the ridge line as I trace the noise. Never a glimpse, no eye shine. Flashlight blazing at where I think it is the whole way. When I guess it's around the top, I hear the loudest howl I've ever heard. It went through me, enough to shake me. A big, big animal howl. And again, this is at least 100 yards away. So I yell as loud as possible back at it. There's a short pause, it screeches, short pause. I yell back at it, it screeches. Now we're in this back and forth, which goes on for a minute or two. But then I notice each screech getting slightly louder and realize it's coming back. At this point, I'm uncomfortable. This thing sounds big and heavy, has lungs much bigger than mine. It's smart enough to circle me, but avoid me, and is now making it clear isn't afraid of me. Time to get inside. I back away, turn and walk quickly toward the back door, maybe 30 yards away. Again, this thing is about 100 yards up a ridge line when it starts moving in. I stop about halfway back, turn and flash the light behind me as I'm hearing very heavy steps again, but very close. This time I get eye shine about five to ten yards past our stone wall, about five feet off the ground and bobbing around. I see a huge dark shadowy mass around it like whatever it is. It's huge, but hunched over, maybe crouching. Excuse me, yellow eyes, teardrop in shape, the size of golf balls about four inches apart. Excuse me, damn coffee. And in the time it took me to take 15, 10 to 15 paces, it apparently came down off the ridge 100 yards. I'm done. I bolt and run flat out for the door as this thing lets out an ear-shattering screech. I get to the door, open up, and quickly look back. No eye shine. No idea where it is. And so I jump inside, lock the doors, turn out lights, check all the windows, and wait, wishing I had a large caliber rifle. But just silence. My wife is wondering, what the F? She heard it all. The neighbor had called. She heard it all and was freaking out. And I have no idea what it is. I just saw out there. I stayed up most of the night, but no more sounds. When I heard animals come back around, I knew it had left and so went to bed. First thought. Out of the three people that actually witnessed this in part or full, I am the only one that will talk about it as a matter of fact. My wife and the neighbor won't discuss and dismiss or deflect. No wonder why stories are buried and lost. I'm not a wilderness guy, but I have hiked the planet and been in strange and sometimes dangerous locations and situations. And this was genuinely weird and primarily frightening, I can assure you, actually happened. Thanks for what you do. Always keep your mind open. John Purcell. You can quote me by name. Right on, John. You're a free, free human being. Free, brave man. Appreciate you sending that in. Uh, you may want to send this to your neighbor and your wife, this video. Let them watch it. At least let them know that. Uh, their reaction is very common. The majority of people that, uh, well, I, sh I shouldn't say the majority because I wouldn't know, but a lot of people that experience this shit, they don't want to acknowledge that they did. They just don't. They'll avoid it at all cost. Whereas other people go the opposite direction. They'll form a Facebook group, beat on trees, get trail cameras, and screech the night. <laughs> right? And they'll let, allow their lives to be obsessed with the topic. And then other people like yourself, well, this is what happened, this is what I experienced, and share it. Anyways, I'm glad you shared that experience with us and where it was, right? And the uh, the sound being so loud, it vibrates. It's, it's that it's such a strong, huge, strong in-your-face pattern of the people's, your chest, your body, feeling 
that screech, that yell, the howl, whatever you want to call it. How they do that, I haven't a clue. But if you look at the size of, say, even a, I don't know, let's take a speaker that might be, I don't know, two feet tall by 18 inches wide and 12 inches deep, a speaker, and that will vibrate our body. And it's not, and that little box isn't the size of lungs of a Clydesdale, right? It's only a small box, but the sound coming out of it will vibrate us. So that's something to think about how they can make our bodies vibrate with the sound they're generating. Possibly. Is it a combo? Is it a combo with, I don't know. I don't know. I'll stop there. I'm babbling like a ding dong today. Okay, here's another one. Short one. No title. My name is Wesley Grogan. I'm 60 years old. In 1974, my cousin and I came across a Sasquatch in Northeast Washington State. I have kept it a secret until I saw your posts about them. It got me thinking if I should ever. Hey, what happened to silence in the set? It's <laughs> kidding. Sorry. I have kept it a secret until I saw your posts about them. It got me thinking if I should ever tell. And one, sorry, I've kept it a secret till I saw your posts about them. It got me thinking of if I should ever tell about, tell anyone about the day. I'd like to tell you, but I am hesitant. Only my wife and my mom know this. I just told them last year. It's very upsetting to me. We're on top of a mountain 7,000 feet high when it ran into us. It ran into us the next morning when the sun came up. We got my aunt's car and left. We hadn't slept all night. We got in the car and fell asleep fast. We just wanted to get out of there. My aunt was sleeping when all this happened. I never believed in them. That night changed the way I see. The our doors I left at one thing were... Okay, there's a bunch of typos. That's okay, though. We'll get through this. I never believed in them. That night changed the way I see the outdoors. I left out one thing. We were hunting for deer. We had two 30 odd sixes with two 20 green slugs, one semi automatic, and one bolt action clip. We've never been back to that place, and I will never go back without a very big rifle. It was 100 miles from anyone or town. And then it stops there is missing some more. Sorry, that's an awkward one, but that sounds like something that needed to be heard. I don't know if you're still listening, if you still watch the channel, if you are, please resend your story, all right? And if you could, if you get one of your else or somebody to do a little pre proof read on it, to do a little punctuation, but get it to us. Get it off your chest. It's a safe place to do it. No matter how disturbing it is for you, okay? It's very important you get it out of you. Get it out. Holy, this is a long one. I'm going in. It's titled Alabama, one of my favorite places. Rural Alabama, that is. This event happened in 1990. I'm 50 years old now, and I've lived with this for almost 30 years. First off, we'll start with a little background. I live and was born in central Alabama with hundreds of acres behind my rural home. Started hunting birds and really whatever I could at the age of five and became a deadly hunter. Started with the BB guns and moved up with age. Anyway, I'd leave every day when not in school and head up with a gun, hatchet, and an old aluminum army canteen. I'd walk maybe a couple miles way back in the woods and stay all day till darkness and supper made me come home. Sometimes I had cousins or a friend with me, but not always. Now I said all that to give the reader an idea of my experiences alone in the woods and my perception of my surroundings. Never afraid or scared of anything from snakes, coyotes, or cats. Years of outdoor adventures. I literally lived to hunt my entire life. I can relate. Okay, about to get to the day. The day I'll never forget. This happened right at 30 years ago now. This will be long and very detailed, so you and the listeners may can put yourselves in my shoes for a moment. I just graduated high school. My best friend and I decided to go on a deer hunt at his dad's hunting club in Flatwood, Alabama. This is really not considered a town back then, but more of a small sign on the side of the road. 
I went down to the hunting club and arrived there around lunch. Looking at the pinup board, where everyone places a pin on a map for safety reasons, so everyone would know where everyone is hunting. It was December and the rut was almost in. We were after a monster whitetail buck. Looking at the map, we found some property across the highway and down a long dirt roadway, away from, the, away from everyone else. You could tell by the holes in the map from the previous pens how often the areas have been hunted. Our goal was to get as far away from all the traffic, fellow hunters, as possible. We hand sketched a map on a sheet of notebook paper and away we went. We parked the truck after about a 20 minute ride from camp and unloaded the ATV. Got all our gear together, drove down the small logging road, probably a mile or better, to the area we wanted to hunt. Our plan was to drop me off at a small green field along the edge of a creek and my best friend was to travel to the end of the road which is approximately three quarters of a mile from me. By this time it was probably 2 p.m and it gets darker on five-ish. He and I both usually hunt until we could not see through our rifle scopes any longer. So, I get to my setup location and have been there for approximately 30 minutes. I began to hear what sounded like at that time of my life drunk Mexicans talking at the end of the field towards what was a swampy area. From the map, it appeared to be a creek when we got there, it was a very swampy stretch. The talking I heard was between two individuals. I could tell by the distance apart. As I listened, I reviewed the camp map in my mind. I could not figure out how anyone could be in that location. According to the map, showing small roads and trails, and we had used the only way in. This was the first odd moment that day. As the day went on, the talking subsided and kind of left my mind, and as the sun began to sink, it was deer time. As most know, the deer start moving right at dark. About 45 minutes before dark, a large doe deer came out and began to feed. About 10 minutes later, the small buck comes out and begins feeding her direction. As the two deer fed going away from my direction, it became darker and darker. Then all of a sudden, both deer raised their heads and became very alert and even spooked looking. I thought I was busted. Maybe the deer had smelled me. But as I watched them, they were looking towards the swamp, exactly where the talking had come from. A few moments passed, and both deer busted in a full run directly towards me. One deer passed within feet to my right, and the other to my left. So that let me know they were unaware of my presence. Looking back, I also noticed the deer did not stop running as far as I could hear them. Most hunters know deer will run so far and stop and look back to see if it's being followed. These two run wide, open, almost like a death run out of my hearing. So anyway, darkness falls and I remain on the stand waiting on my friend on the ATV to come to pick me up. It's not unusual for him to come out of his tree stand 15 to 20 minutes past dark. After about 30 to 40 minutes go by, I decided to pack up all my stuff and walk out to the small logging road and wait for my ride to the truck. I get to the curve where he had dropped me off at, and I just wait. Back in those days, we rarely brought a flashlight. I did not have one that day with me because woods and dark was not really an issue. As I stand there, I assume I've been there for about 20 minutes, and I start hearing large trees snapping and breaking roughly 2 to 250 yards away. My father was a logger, and we cut several trees, and I know what limbs and larger branches sound like when they're being broken. These were very large limbs snapping, <clears throat> what appeared to be small trees being pushed over and hitting the drier leaves and making lots of noise. This noise was deliberately coming closer and closer to me, heading my direction, and at about 50 yards away, I started yelling at it, not having any earthly idea what it was. As I've been yelling for a few minutes, as loud as I could, it stops breaking limbs, and all I could hear was slow, bipedal footsteps that were loud and sounded heavy. There's also an occasional popping noise that sounds like a large dog snapping at a bumblebee or a fly. It's the only way I can explain it. When they are laying around next to you on the porch, the steps begin slowing as I continue to curse the animal and yell 
and reaching down, throwing whatever I could pick up from the ground in the direction of the footsteps, footsteps excuse me, <clears throat> the creature continued in my direction and stopped roughly 25 yards away from me. At this point, I was still screaming at it. I was kicking debris towards the sound and warning it that I would shoot. However, at the time, I had no intention to fire. Anyway, whatever it was, stood there for roughly 15 to 20 minutes silently. I had almost begun to think somehow it had walked off without me knowing. Then it began to move. It walked parallel along the edge of the logging road, about 25 yards and crossed a small pathway. I could tell by the difference in the footsteps when it crosses the road. Then it came down the side of the logging road in my direction and stopped directly across from where it had previously stopped, meaning I had turned 180 degrees. As I continued to yell and scream at it, telling it to leave and just go away, or I would be shooting soon. Well, again, there was 15 to 20 minutes of silence. Picture this. I was kicking leaves and pine straw or whatever was on the ground towards it, pitch dark. December darkness, complete silence from whatever it was, and I did not smell anything unusual other than the typical murky smelling swamp. Again, as I had thought I was going nuts because I no longer heard anything, movement again. The thing followed its path right back up the side of the road and crossed exactly where it had previously, and came back down towards me and stopped exactly at its first location when it stopped walking the first time. You can imagine by this point, I'm done fooling with this thing. But now my voice is hoarse and I can barely yell anymore. After several warnings, I'm down on one knee, pointing my rifle in the direction of where I supposed it had stopped. After about five minutes, my patience had grown thin. I fired my 270 rifle and I knew what I, expe and I, knew what I expected to happen. After the noises I had heard previously with all the tree breaks, some sounded very large, maybe six to eight inch diameter trees. The fireball from the blast and the echoing seemed to last a minute. I expected the woods to be torn to pieces with something fleeing. Now this creature or animal and all aspects had virtually circled me and smelled me, knowing most animals in the woods after smelling a human would flee, <clears throat> and especially at point-blank range on the receiving end of a 270 high-powered rifle blast. But I was surprised and realized I was surrounded by complete silence again. While I sat there in the darkness realizing I only had three more rounds left in the rifle and thinking the bullets are small as a pencil, that I better save my ammo for just in case. After a few minutes, which seemed like an eternity, literally five to ten minutes, I heard movement bipedal footsteps starting to walk away. It walked away following the exact path it had taken on its approach. I cannot tell you the relief when I realized it was walking away and not towards me. As I listened to the footfalls until I could not hear any longer and guessing maybe 100 or more yards till it was out of hearing, no more tree breaks or any popping noises at all, just walking, I began trying to follow the pitch black logging road towards the truck. Yeah, this would be shitty. I finally made it at the truck, which had a toolbox in the bed, and that's where our play I placed my feet while I sit in the cab of the truck, one while I sat on the cab of the truck, wondering what had just transpired. And where was my friend? And why was he so late? That would suck. Again, after what seemed like an eternity to hear the ATV coming, he pulls up, loads it up on the trailer, and I help him tie it down. <clears throat> Come to find out, the ATV had broken down, and my friend was soaking wet from sweat, trying to push start the ATV. Finally got to start running. We never spoke of the things that happened to me that afternoon. Later on, on the way home, he did, he did ask me if I heard a shot way after dark, probably two hours after dark. And I just looked at him like I did not what, like I did not know what he was talking about. Back then, you did not want to be the guy that shot at something that was unidentifiable, or tell the story and face the ridicule. The Bigfoot or Sasquatch never really crossed my mind. Roughly 20 years later, I had dial-up internet and happened to see something on TV. Did a Google search on Alabama Big Feet. 
Just so happens there's a couple of articles written up in the Alabama Game and Fish magazine around the same years that this encounter happened to me. After reading the articles, these people claim to see a creature. One headshot at it several times trying to, trying to get to his truck. And also one described the popping of the jaws, the same as I had heard. Now after 10 years of studying and watching and listening to everything I can find out about a Sasquatch, I am positive this one, this was one that was messing with me. It brings a whole new meaning to messing with Sasquatch as in the commercial. Sasquatch was messing with me. I continue to deer hunt, but I never go without at least four or five flashlights and plenty of firepower. I've been known to be the first one at the truck on most hunts. I admit, I did not visually see anything, but again, with all the internet, my internet research, I cannot believe it could have been anything else. I have not and did not return to that club ever again, and my friend's father later on got out of the club also. I very rarely tell this story to anyone, but have on occasion. And people that know me believe something really strange went on, and some even opened up their own to their own stories. I can say that ever since that day, it has changed the way I hunt forever. Sorry for such a long story and not even having a visualization, but I'm trying to put you in my shoes that evening. I will say during my research, I did hear a few recordings that sounded very close to the talking of the two things I heard. I did say they were communicating with each other. I thought it was a mix of Asian and Native American languages. Thanks for reading this. What I call my encounter. I know something's out there and is being covered by and is being covered up by unknown people. Have a good day and thanks again. Okay, thank you, man. You're a brave man. Appreciate you sharing that. And if you are curious, Green County is where I spend most of my time in Alabama. Mm. Change the way you hunt forever, no doubt. It hasn't changed the way I hunt, it's just changed up um, what I normally listen to and look for while I'm hunting, right? Uh, some unknown people are covering up. Some unknown people are covering up a lot. This is just one of the easiest topics that we have at hand to 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 absolutely prove to the general public, to all the people that we are being lied to and misled from a very early age on. Very early age on. Imagine that. We have literally millions of people that know of these other beings living around us. Millions of people, but the children are not, beca not being taught about it, <laughs> right? It's not a subject that the children are being taught about. Why is that? I believe there is a piss load of topics out there that the children should be taught about, but are not. Our children are only taught about so many topics, just enough to get them into living their lives the way they are supposed to be living them, according to a whatever, how big the group of individuals are that are ensuring that our children fall into line, right? And do not become truly educated with the real world. We are not truly educated in any way when it comes to the real world, as far as I'm concerned. Take from that way, you will leave it. But I am absolutely convinced we are we are not educated in any way. <clears throat> we are actually uh, programmed the opposite direction of where we should be going, as far as I'm concerned. It's a whole new topic of babble, right? That's a topic better off babbled with a few people sitting in person so everybody can throw shit back and forth at each other. Anyway. I gotta go see what the dog's ripping up. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. Hold on a minute. Alright. Better mark this is red. There's no title in this email. I believe this is from an older folder, maybe. Hi Steve. I've been on the fence as to whether or not I was gonna write this email because it wasn't that exciting of an experience, if it was one at all. We're gonna find out. They all count. Everybody counts, man. We're not looking for excitement here. We're not looking to be entertained here at all, all right? My family has a long history where we elk hunt in Eastern Oregon. My mom grew up in an area. Sorry, my mom grew up in the area. 
And my dad has been hunting there for over 40 years. And I've been hunting it for close to 20. I've had two strange experiences over the years up there. Not Sasquatch related as far as I know. The one thing that has left my buddy and I still scratching our heads 17 years later. This year added one more experience, although not very exciting, has left me wondering. The main hunt we do is on one big bridge. And this year I decided to switch things up from my normal path and hike to a spot to sit that I discovered elk like to that I discovered elk like to escape through. To get up there I hike up a gated road for about two miles, then sneak into my stand. Opening morning about 45 minutes before shooting hours, I began working my way slowly up the road. There's one corner on the road that the vegetation turns from, fairly open to thicker than dog's hair. And even though it's still dark, I stop to glass to check for moving shadows since I know it's a spot animals like to cross. I see nothing and continue on. In the 30 seconds it took me to get to the corner, I have this odd feeling come over me. And in my head I say, I'm just here to get my dinner, not here to screw with you, so just go hide because other guys are coming down the hill. Wow, good one. Now I don't know if that happened because I've watched all your videos or because when I'm in the mountains alone my mind wanders, but it felt like the right thing to do. One thing I know is that is that corner has always bugged me. We've smelt rotting flesh there in the past and could never find a carcass, not even in the culvert that runs under the road. Luckily I had no other odd feelings come over me that day and never thought about it neither. Either. Sorry, you guys. The second morning, I decided to do the same hunt again. My younger cousin, he's 29, goes with me so I can hopefully help him get his first elk. We start up the hill, and once again, we get close to the corner. I stop once again to glass it in the dark. Now, I never said anything about what I felt or said the morning before and actually forgot about it. As I lowered my binoculars, he said in a panicked voice, Look again. I just... I just seen red eyes looking at us. At that moment, I remember my thoughts from the morning before. Look again at my glass, didn't see anything. And joke with him to lighten the mood. He's not the most comfortable in the woods, so I don't tell him about my thoughts the morning before because I like hunting with him and don't want him to get freaked out. We continue on. And at the corner, I say in my head again, we're just here to get dinner, leave us alone. I find it strange that one morning I have an odd feeling come over me and then the next morning, without mentioning anything to anyone, my cousin swears he saw red eyes in the exact same spot. Was it something? Yes. <laughs> I don't know, but it hasn't sat right with me for the last month and decided to share it with you. Steve, I really love what you're doing to help everyone out and creating a safe environment for folks to share their experiences. I've been very, I've been very captivated by all of the emails and your words of wisdom. And even though it might feel repetitive to you, I hope you continue. No stopping here, my man. I'm not sure where I fully stand on the whole subject. The evidence is there. I want to believe. I really think I do. I have no desire to have a negative experience and not sure if I ever want to see one in person. You've talked about and asked why people need pictures and evidence. I think the reason why so, why is so that those of us that haven't had experiences with these beings can know that we're not believing in folklore or a fairy tale. Like with many topics, it's easy to dismiss the things we don't understand. I think for many people, we want so badly for them to be real and want for the naysayers and shit talkers to eat a little crow. After watching you speak on this topic, I just want the quote TV experts slash jackasses to be made fools of and for us to finally get the truth. Regardless of any physical proof being shown or not through you, I will continue to support what you're doing and support those that need to gain their joy for the outdoors back after having negative experiences. I love what you're doing and hopefully you don't get burnt out on it. Sorry for the long email, but I guess I needed to get this off my chest to help all as well. And by damn, I'm anxiously waiting for a video of you holding Zeus in your hands. Gotta love black tail hunting. Appreciate you reading this, Dave. Okay, Dave. Appreciate the email, man. Honest, straight shooting dude. You know what it was. As far as hoping it's real, I don't know, man. It's like, um, 
Yeah, it's funny, I have some of my closest friends uh, trust me with their children to, to care for their children. They trust me and prefer me to care for their children. At the same time, the same people don't want to accept the fact that these beings are real. Even though I look them square in the eyes, I look, I see one 15 yards away from me. Possibly the... I. I know I have seen them physically twice, maybe three times. Heard them, I don't know how many times, that shit thrown at me, seen the evidence. But it's amazing how many people will still say, like you said, I want to believe, I want to hope, it's not just a fairy tale or folklore. And then I can reply with, dude, do you really think a fairy tale is coming out of my mouth? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's odd, right? And as far as me not giving up and not quitting, getting burnt out, that's funny, you're... Thankfully, you are familiar with the story of the buck I named Zeus, and just so you know, just for me personally, um, once I decide I'm going to do something, it doesn't matter what it is, I will die before I quit doing it. I don't know where it comes from. I honestly do not know where I have, how I have that in me, and that particular buck is an example. I have known of and stayed concentrated on watching that bug grow to be ridiculous, enormous size. I have had, uh, I don't know how many trail camera videos and pictures I've got of him. Call it obsession, call it whatever you want, but I vowed that I would harvest that buck with my bow. It would have been the largest buck ever recorded in blacktail history in, British, in the province of British Columbia, without a doubt, but I physically seen that deer once, twice. That's it. I seen him twice and I planned my entire fall around him and I and I hunted an area where I might see four or five deer in, all together in the fall, maybe maybe ten, and I would hunt every single day for 30, 60 days when the fall. I hike up there in the mountain in the springtime during the summer, bring a salt pot and cameras. I'd put in I don't know how many days, and I never burnt out once. I never got tired of it once, and I stayed absolutely focused and enthusiastic the entire time, right? And I've done that as well with similar activities. But anyways, what I'm saying is, I'm not getting burnt out. Not a chance. If anything, I'm speeding up. I'm getting more. I think as we go here, I am getting more enthusiastic because I have learned so much, and I do know for me, for a fact, that many of the answers everybody wants are coming. I know that for a fact. So, it's not, it's not gonna happen. And it's, another thing too is, when I know there are individuals out there who want all of you to be quiet and not learn, that, that alone is enough for me to go, in your faces, bitches, <laughs> right? Now, just because of that, it's gonna get way worse for your asses. Now we're gonna really ramp it up and we're not going to slow down and even more people are going to hear about it and we're going to make sure that every single person gets heard word for word. So there's the other um, fuel for me. There's no chance. The only thing that's going to make me stop doing this is physical death. That's it. That's it. If anything, um, what's going to happen from my end is things are going to get bigger and louder and more in your face. That's the only thing that's going to happen here. It's not going to stop. Rest assured. Um, and you want the TV people to be made jack. Don't you know what? The best thing you can do with those personalities, those personalities in life, not just those idiots on TV, idiots in general, but they're a good example. They need you to listen to them and, and watch them. They need the attention. So, you don't have to physically, verbally insult them. You don't have to do bad things to them. The worst thing that you can do to them is just chop them off and don't look at them, don't acknowledge them, don't repeat their names, just blank them out. That's the most effective you can, thing you can do to those groups. There you go. Well, how's this for Babble Fest? Pretty babbly today, right? Pretty babbly. What are you doing, Adventure Dog? Do you think we're going outside to do something? I threw a uh, full pack of elk sausages out of this morning out of the freezer. <laughs> she loves that. I've just been chewing on her. 
I don't know if she had antler and I think she wants to go out and have her morning wrestle, but let's see. Give me one second here. Um, yesterday, I said in yesterday's video submission for everyone to throw down their top 10 questions if they could ask questions, if they could ask these people 10 questions, what would they be? Assuming that they would be getting honest answers. And I said that I would pin, I would type and pin my, my 10 questions in the comment section below the video, which I did. But in case you don't read the comment section, like a lot of people don't, including me usually, I'll read them right now, right? So if you could receive, okay, let me start reading. These are my 10 questions, assuming I was receiving honest answers, all right? My number one question would be, do you know who I am? And that question, the way I delivered that would be, do you know who I am, where I come from, what I do, who I truly am? My second question, do you know my true history as a species on this planet? That's a big question, right? That would possibly include a very big answer. Number three, who are you? Who are you? When I ask that question, who are you? What's your name? Where do you live? What do you do? Number four, tell me your true history as a species. That's a big question that would probably knee-jerk a very large answer, right? That covers a lot. Like my questions cover a lot of other questions, all in one question, right? Number five, who insists you remain hidden from humans? The answer to that question would also help us learn a lot, right? Who insists you remain hidden from humans? That would open up a whole new can of worms, not just with this topic. As soon as we could find out who the main source of that push is, that opens up a lot more answers to a lot more puzzles. Number six, who or what seeks you out to eliminate you, kill you? Now, I have been uh, people who do know, who people I trust have shared with me that, quote, absolutely, there are human beings that seek out to destroy these beings today. Who's that and why? Who is that and why? Number eight, can you share all the skills you have with me? Meaning, I want to know exactly what they can do. Physically, spiritually, mentally, whatever you want to call it. Share with me everything you can do. That covers everything. Making noises, moving, disappearing, traveling, communicating, all the skills, right? Mind reading, mind speaking, that covers it all. Number nine, do you know if I can become aware of and utilize the same skills as you? That's a big one. That's something that really drives me crazy is not knowing what I should be able to do. I know for me inside my gut is screaming at me that I've been misled, manipulated as a kid, to ensure that I fall in line and I do not go with what I should naturally be able to do. That's in my face obvious. What do you know about true evil and how to eliminate slash stop it from harming my people? For me, that's a big one for me. <laughs> it's because I give a shit and I would love to be able to do anything I could to stop this insanity and stop the misleading and the lying to all of us. I would, that's, that's something if I could, if I could do that. Oh my God, would I be all over that one? So there you go. That's my 10 questions. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's about it. That's my 10 questions. Will they be answered? I think they will be answered. Yes, I do. I think these questions will be answered for me and all of you, because obviously I'm open book with everybody and I'll share it. But I do believe these answers are coming. There you go. We just woke up with the world today at the same, well, over here anyway, just woke up with the world making a video. It's full bright out now. I'm going to go get this loaded up for all of you. 
Continue to get everything off your chest and share it here or somewhere else. Share my story at howtohunt.com. That's where you share your experiences and your knowledge, word, and it gets shared word for word. Everybody's equal. Everyone's the same here. Everybody's safe, respected, and protected. Right? This is a, uh, a very, very large group of people. I think we're creeping up on three, getting close to 300,000 subscribers. Hmm. But I don't mean that as being a bad thing. I'm just saying, hmm, as in, hmm, I'll bet you there's probably should be millions, right? People have been getting unsubscribed from this channel a lot. And uh, people's comments, I hear it all the time. People's comments are getting deleted all the time. Isn't that, isn't that weak? Isn't that so weak? People getting unsubscribed, not by me. People's comments are getting deleted, not by me. People's comments are being prevented from being posted, not by me. Dark sons of bitches, right? Anyway, here we go. Lots to do. Gonna get on my day. Day's just starting for most people in my neighborhood. I'll go see if everybody's awake in the house yet or not. And uh, I'll be back again, because I'm not going away. He will. <laughs> 